Resilient. It wasn't something that Melanie Tyrrell considered herself. Despite falling off a horse, requiring multiple surgeries to regain full mobility, it took Melanie completing the English Channel for her to realize it herself. Hello and welcome to Marathon Swim Stories, where we explore the human side of the superhuman feats of endurance swimmers and those who support them. I'm marathon swimmer and coach, Shannon Keegan. Are you enjoying Marathon Swim Stories? Why don't you give it a rating, leave a review, and share your favorite episodes with friends. I hope you enjoy listening to Melanie's Tale of Resilience. Hey Mel, what's your story? <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, well, obviously, I, I've been listening to this podcast for a little while love love listening to it and I was really pleasantly surprised to uh, discover Guy Davis was on here a few weeks ago so um, I had great fun listening to his story again and uh, obviously then got in contact with you to say oh I was the crew member that uh, <laughs> was on there and, and, and did her swim a, a bit early um, and was witness to the uh, egg incident in the middle of the night that he referenced <laughs> <laughs> um, and obviously I, I, I then just contacted you to say that you know if you're ever short of a story and you want a funny one <laughs> I've got one for you I didn't expect you to come back so quickly but yeah thank you um, <laughs> um, so my story is um, I, I was a, a club swimmer when I was younger um, from about the age of 10 to 14 um, I was a breaststroke swimmer I was definitely not an all-rounder I was good at breaststroke but nothing else particularly <laughs> <laughs> um, I was usually last in any other event definitely not butterfly <laughs> um, and then I probably I think I gave it gave it up probably about the age of 14 15 um, and then for some years it was just swimming for pleasure you know just keeping fit um, long periods out of the water um, when I didn't have access to a pool or anything um, but obviously on holiday I was always in the pool you know as much as possible just love being in the water doing handstands or whatever whatever <laughs> I could do <laughs> um, and then in um, 1997 we went on holiday to um, Hawaii for the f- first time with my husband I'd been once before but we went together and from there we we got into scuba diving and uh, went. To, I, I'm a bit obsessive, so when I take on something new, I go a bit mad. So I did the paddy course, then the advanced, then every specialty there was, and then master scuba diver, etc. Um, and then got quite obsessed with sharks because I saw quite a lot of sharks in scuba diving, which I'd originally been really terrified of sharks and really didn't want to see any. And then I, I went the other way, and I'm quite obsessed with uh, seeing them now. I've realised they're they're probably more scared of me than. <laughs> I am of them on the whole. Um, I appreciate that we just captured that and recorded it and we're sharing it with people. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then around 2004, five, uh, we joined a gym. So I did a little bit of pool swimming, but we had um, an induction at the gym, my husband and I, and he's not a particularly active person, but they gave him a, a gym program that was 12 minutes of running and they gave me 20 minutes of walking on an incline I was quite insulted by that <laughs> so I, I that made me quite determined so from then I, I went a bit mad and took up running just to prove a point and um I did a few 5ks up to half marathon I definitely was more suited to the longer distances I'm better at mm. endurance definitely not built for speed um but I then also did a few sprint triathlons so that was my first foray into proper open water open water and wetsuit swimming which I wasn't too keen on I found I'm quite floaty as it is without <laughs> the, the buoyancy of the wetsuit so my struggling to keep my legs in in the water <laughs> yeah, in the wet suit. Problem too. <laughs> um and I I struggled with the the, the mass start of the yeah. you know the open water swim I know I was just having a lane to myself and <laughs> a black line to follow and I was shocked by the the madness that is the start of a a triathlon Triathlon, swim most particularly mad (laughs) yeah yeah um and then so I I did that for a couple of years just sprint triathlons and um 
you know, the running and then gave that up because I w- it was just something to prove a point. I'd done it. I was a terrible runner. I was overtaken by everything, anything and everything. Um, but I, I'd done it, so I was happy with that. Um, and then around that time, we it's a, a, a whole separate story, but we rescued a couple of horses. Um, and as, as with everything we seemed to do, we seemed to do everything back to front. We rescued the horses and then I realized I probably should learn to ride mm. um, so <laughs> I hadn't ri- I hadn't ridden when I was younger or anything and, and we just rescued two horses that were not schooled horses mine was wow. only six months old he's in the picture in the back the black and white oh, one wow um, he was six months old so he wasn't back to anything so I was frantically having lessons while he was growing up wow. <laughs> um, so then 2007 we were uh, riding, I I was riding the other horse that we have and had a riding accident. We were out in a field and she spooked at something while we were cantering. Um, So I came off at quite a speed, hit the the ground. It was quite hard ground in July, rolled uh, a few times. Um, My husband disappeared into the distance with these two horses galloping off with him trying to hang on. disappeared out of view and because long story short we we both ended up at the hospital oh my god um he had a dislocated shoulder and I had um initially they thought one fracture of my uh left shoulder and um my right thumb so by the a few hours later we came out of hospital with three out of four arms in slings Mm, my God. And, uh, <laughs> we got home and and he'd been given gas and air and morphine and everything when they put his shoulder back oh, and gosh. uh they'd given me some paracetamol which are not really much use at that point and he, he was so he was a bit dazed and confused and he said to me what are we gonna do now <laughs> in these three slings I was like, we eat some chocolate to cheer ourselves up before <laughs> we think of anything else <laughs> um so from then it was discovered that my my thumb had been put in in the wrong position in plaster so it needed an operation to stabilize it <laughs> oh um and then the hand surgeon said that there's a lot of soft tissue damage uh, a lot of bruising i think we should re-x-ray your shoulder so they did that at a different angle and discovered that the the ball joint of my shoulder was actually in three pieces oh wow <laughs> and so i i was sort of rushed in, in for surgery within a couple of days uh, because I said I was I was too young for it to be left like that I would it would really limit my um, mobility Ability, going forward yeah. yeah and just before the op they discovered I had um, a chip on my shoulder as well so they had chipped a piece off as well so they had to find that and and reattach that <laughs> <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> so I was out of action for quite some months with about three months with the operations I couldn't lay down because I had metal in holding my shoulder together. So I had to sleep upright, which thankfully I'm someone who can sleep anywhere, anytime. So I was probably better suited to me than anyone else, but it was still hard work. Um, And then a lot of physio and and hydrotherapy for the next year, I would say, Mm. try and get back movement. And the hydrotherapy was actually much more beneficial you can move a lot better in the water than you can on land Mm. with any sort of injury but I I realized then that my my breaststroke was nothing like it used to be I couldn't get my arm straight definitely couldn't do front crawl I was so I was really quite shocked at what I couldn't do anymore Mm -hmm. so I I was determined to, to to get back as much as I could and I think before that I'd taken for granted my swimming you know I'd I just assumed I'd always be able to do it mm-hmm. and I could go back to it at any point. And then I realized actually, you know, this, this could be a big problem now going forward if I want to do anything else. So I, I did as much as I could. I got back into swimming, actually doing the handstands in the pool was recommended just to help <laughs> with the stabilization. Yeah, so that perfect. was good, good practice. Um, and then I, I started doing some open water swims locally. There is, um, various events that sort of one or two miles or kilometers mm-hmm. around an area called Henley uh, in mm-hmm. Berkshire and also in, in London I did one that was from Hampton Court to Kingston in the River Thames and I, I just built it from there doing um, longer and longer distances until I did a few 
10k swims and then the longest was um 14 14k well did you have was... any like underlying pain like as you oh yes yeah, lots yeah. okay yeah a lot of I mean it was always always difficult to move my left arm wow. doing front crawl it was yeah it was constantly painful and my my left arm really it did drag a bit then at that point so when I did one of the swims the Hampton Court my my husband was following along the bank and um he was watching and he he was following the wrong swimmer because he's you know everybody in a wetsuit to him looks the same and he's he's going along talking to a friend said oh she's moving her left arm quite well and she's bilateral breathing that's good she doesn't normally oh and she's kicking her legs all these things I don't do it wasn't me he was following (laughs) I was at the end going where is he (laughs) um so yeah, so I did I, I did various local events and then I, I was considering doing Lake Windermere mm-hmm. and I, I started training for it, but my shoulder really started to give me more pain than it ever had before. Mm-hmm. And I, I just felt I was going to be pushing it too hard at that point. I went back to my physio and um, she said, I, I think you need to go back to the consultant. It's mm. something's not quite right. So about four years ago, I um, had more surgery they shaved a bit off my collarbone to make more room and uh, various repairs and from tears and scar tissue and then since then my shoulder's been a lot better so I've I've, I've got back more movement than I've ever had before wow does it um, hurt less now just in general it really generally doesn't doesn't generally hurt that's good um I, I have slightly um my, my range of mobility is not this, quite the same as it is in my Right. Uh, right arm sorry I get my hand behind my back things like that it's very difficult mm-hmm. but my front crawl stroke is not too bad I'm told now compared to what it it used to be I mean it's it's not great but uh, <laughs> can you go back to the when you first started pushing distance what was mm-hmm. what was that like how what was motivating you to keep pushing to longer distances um is it just your obsessive nature <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah I think it was partly that I think it's also I'm not I'm not speedy so uh anything <laughs> um I found that with the running so I knew I was better at endurance I do mm-hmm. find the first half of any swim the hardest but and the longer it goes on generally the, the easier it seems to become on the whole not mm-hmm. not always obviously but definitely the first bit for me is the hardest mm-hmm. getting your heart rate settled and getting comfortable and and so I did feel that I was I was suited to um, slightly longer distances and I, w- I was just so um, pleased when I, I achieved when I did the 14k it just really helped my confidence my self-esteem you know because I wasn't that confident and I was like wow you know this this really helped me you know t- to know that I'd been able to do that I was mm-hmm. pleased yeah. um, and I, I just never wanted to take my swimming for granted again I was like I, you know I want to make the most of this yeah because having also still having horses there is also the risk you know that I could fall off again (laughs) yeah yeah Um, and in fact I I, you know I was quite paranoid about that happening Um, and if I went fell the same way again what would happen to my shoulder it did actually happen Um, (laughs) two three years later I I went I have it it seems I always fall left for some reason um I am left-handed maybe it's something to do with that but um I fell left hit hit a fence ripped off my watch fell on the floor but thankfully nothing I I had no problems um and I did it again still have metal in there no no it was (laughs) all taken out okay it was taken out yeah (laughs) um before I want to, I want you to keep going, but I'm wondering, mm. is that, um, that self-confidence that you kind of found through, through mm. your kind of swimming longer distances, did that seep into other parts of your life? Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, I'm, I think a, a lot of people who know me would, would probably think I'm confident and I'm, I'm absolutely not. I, I I'm, a, I'm uh, determined. Yes, but I'm not necessarily confident. Yeah. Um, and so just to achieve some of these things, I think I'm, being more of um, an introvert I'm more I think task driven than people driven do you know what I mean Mm -hmm. in that I like to achieve things and that's what gives me my confidence right right yeah yeah Um, I appreciate that (laughs) (laughs) um so So uh, the 14k and that was before you went back for the shoulder revise yes yeah okay 
and yeah, then you so wanted I, to do Windermere. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't end up doing Windermere. I okay. haven't done it yet. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm doing everything back to front as with, with everything okay. else I do in life. But um, so I, I was doing another one of the Henley Swims and they have a, a thing called the Outdoor Swimmer Show at, at one of the events in July and they have various um, companies there. One was a charity called Aspire who help um, support people who have suffered a spinal cord injury. And they organize lots of different sporting events, but they um, run a lot of channel relays each year. And I, I spoke to a couple of the people uh, there who, who just said what a, a wonderful event it was and just such a great thing, you know, working as a team and just the experience of, of the whole thing. So I, I, I thought, oh, okay, that, you know, that might be another um, challenge. And when I was young, I'd always had, you know, a, a dream to swim the channel, but realistically, I didn't think it was something I'd ever do. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, I just didn't, didn't seem a possibility, but I thought, well, a channel relay will give me a taste of that, you know. Um, so I, I went for the assessment day with Aspire and, and was entered into a team called the, uh, that year they were all big cats. So we were the Aspire Tigers, which was why you saw in the picture, the swimming cat was the tiger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's when I got my first taste of cold water swimming. Um, we went to one of the local Lidos. Well, not local, but in London, Parliament Hill. It's a big um, 60 plus metre Lido, uh, unheated. And it was to get, get us ready for <laughs> swimming at Dover. And obviously up till then in the colder water, I'd been wearing a wetsuit. And I wouldn't normally get in unless it was 17 degrees C. Mm-hmm. which I know you work in Fahrenheit, but um, I'm not sure what it's that okay. would be. Not everybody in my audience is in the US, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> if I could convert uh, in my head, that, that would be the real trick. <laughs> yeah, uh, Guy might, might, might know on that, but um, yeah, so we went to Parliament Hill and it was 10 degrees and I got in and I was like, my God, this is, this is crazy. I can't get into this. This, you know, it hurt, hurt to get in. 10 degrees my- is 50. 50 okay yeah 17 um, 62 okay. <laughs> um yeah it took me forever to get in the pool I, I i struggled to put my hands in i definitely couldn't get my face in the water and actually that's still the bit i i struggle with a little bit but you know eventually got in and swam a bit without putting my head in too much and um from there we went to dover in the march and um we uh, had a, a training weekend and I'd expected Dover to be really grim <laughs> to sort of things I'd read about it I thought oh it doesn't look very appealing <laughs> actually I loved it absolutely loved it <laughs> it was just such a, a fantastic experience you know swimming with the team and and swimming in the sea I enjoyed I'd not really done that much of it uh, before then other than obviously scuba diving I'd, I'd done a lot of but not swimming um, then in April I went on a swim quest channel and distance training camp which is where I met Guy Mm -hmm. Um, and I went with a view to doing my relay qualifier which is two hours and after the first day or so I think I I, I wanted to do the same as everyone else so I I I said to one of the guys but can I can I do the (laughs) can I do the same because I I wasn't really ready to get out you know yeah um and so I I I did the same as the the soloist and and ended up doing the six hour qualifier. Nice. <laughs> yeah, which was uh, I was really it, I was just pleased even just to have done that. You mm-hmm. know, just to say I'd actually qualified was I was really chuffed about. And um, the swim guides and uh, one of which was Emma Franz from Dover Channel Training mm-hmm. uh, pulled me to one side and said, you know, we think you've got a channel solo in you. You should think about it um so I I came home and it actually took me quite a long time to process that and think you know did I really think I was you know they believed it but did I did I believe (laughs) it was possible or you know and I had concerns if my shoulder would hold up as well you know Mm -hmm. it it, relatively pain-free but when I push the distances it can twinge sometimes a little bit Mm -hmm. um so from there I went back to train with Aspire I crewed for a channel swimmer in July of that year who was on the same camp with Guy and I and um, 
he it was obviously that was my first experience of being out in the channel on a boat mm-hmm. so I was it was all a bit of a new experience I thought it would be good for me to actually see what it's yeah. going to be like you know to know <laughs> is this really what I want right. um it, while we were getting ready to get onto the boat I heard a splash and I turned around and he'd fallen in the in the marina um next to the boat I think he'd tried to move over someone trying to walk past and had fallen mm. in mm-hmm. and um obviously then we, we went out and he he swam but he he did he didn't finish he, he he got out after a few hours and I wondered whether that incident you know affected him I, I wasn't sure I mean he had actually swum the channel before mm. so maybe also his drive again to do it again maybe wasn't there as well I don't know mm. but it gave me a taste but just for a few hours of you know what was involved swimming in the mm. dark and um that was that um we did then a, a boat practice with our relay team with one of the channel pilots that for me was a certainly a, a learning experience as well because I because I don't bilateral breathe and I was on the wrong side of the boat I was zigzagging all over the place um <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so that was a bit of a shock to me um and also how the conditions can change so really quickly wow you know, it was yeah. flat calm when the first swimmer got in and when I got in as the sixth one it was pretty rough by then wow so it was good experience you know really good experience for the the relay um so our, our relay went in in September um we made it across obviously it was really good we went it was mostly through the night we went half four in the afternoon I had one swim just before it went dark and the second one in the middle of the night and it was really really rough mm. and I didn't handle it particularly well. I swallowed quite a lot of water. My goggles mm. nearly came off. Um, so again, it was a good experience for me. I I watched the person who went after me, and he was just calm, relaxed, just went with it, with the flow. And I watched. I thought, I need to learn from him. This is <laughs> don't fight it so much, you know. Don't get yourself in a tiz about it. Um, but we did the relay. Uh, loved it. Loved the experience. What did you, how did you kind of tackle the, like the zigzagging being a one-sided breather? Like, how did you... <laughs> well, thankfully that the boat that we went with, um, Anastasia, um, his, Ed, Eddie Spelling's preference is to have people on the side that suited me. Oh, so I was lucky. okay. I was okay. fine. So yeah, I was very lucky that it, it suited me. Um, so I had no problems once I could, mm-hmm. you know, I was breathing towards the boat. I was, I was right. fine. Right. Um, Any yeah. other um, recommendations for getting through night night swimming? It sounds like you kind of had to adapt to that a little bit. Anything you want to share yeah. for other people? Um, it's difficult. I think for me, I wasn't particularly nervous about swimming in the dark just because I'd done a lot of diving and I did a lot of night diving. So I think my experience and that probably helped me really that I'd done so much diving. And, and, and in the dark, it didn't really disorientate me or anything. Um, and I, I just tried to think, you know, uh, wow, I'm in the channel. I'm actually swimming in the channel. So I was just super excited to be there, mm-hmm. you know. And I know some people worry about, will worry about things like sharks. I mean, you're not likely to see sharks in the channel, I, I, you know. Um, but for me, if we had, I'd have probably been quite excited. So I wasn't worried about that either. <laughs> I was worried about jellyfish, um, but not not anything not else yeah. No. yeah and and we didn't actually have any jellyfish I think one person got stung oh wow um I think it may be because it was quite rough hmm. and someone said to me that the jellyfish stay lower well, down yeah in the water when that. it's rough yeah. so there maybe that helped yeah 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 um so yeah we came back from the um channel relay everybody else said oh that's it no, I'm not coming back to Dover again. That's me done. And I was like, oh, I'm coming back next week. You know, I, I couldn't <laughs> stay away. I just loved it. Um, so I went back to Dover channel training and decided, you know, I, I, I think I should book a solo. I think, yeah, yeah, I'm not ready to give this up. So I I spoke to the pilot that we did our boat practice with, which was Simon Ellis, um, and said, look, you know, I'd, I'd be interested. Emma, in, you know, introduced me to him again and, and he said yeah I've got a slot for 2021 I think it was early July I said okay great so I signed up for that um 
I then went and did a, another swimming camp in October and then did some winter swimming. There's a, a winter swimming challenge called the Polar Bear Challenge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of that. I think I have, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just basically to swim through the winter and do certain distances over the winter months outside. And I found that really, really helped me. You know, I, I got used to the temperature. Mm-hmm. And then when I went back to Dover again the next year, the temperature yeah. seemed felt so much warmer than it had done the year before. Yeah, it helps yeah. a lot to ride, ride, the, ride the thermometer down. It's good. Important. Definitely. Yeah. Um, perspective on the cold instead of it's always just cold. You're like, well, I've been in colder. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I, I went to on, on another camp to Cape Town in February 2020 and did the Robin Island swim. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is where I um, I swam with some people I already knew from other camps, and I met one of my people, one of my friends who became one of my crew later on, Helen Powell. Mm-hmm. We swam the um, Robin Island swim together. Had a How- fant- fantastic experience. She'd never swum that long before, so I I said I wanted to swim with her, you know, that so that she had someone you know, by her side. And she was normally a wetsuit swimmer as well. And it was going to be cold. She's a lot slimmer than me as well. So she was going to feel the cold more than me. Um, What's the distance yeah. on the Robin Island again? I forget. Um, I Sorry. forget as well. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember, but it took us three hours, 26. Okay. To do it. Yeah. Um, we had a fantastic experience. It was cold, definitely. But we had uh, seals came along to swim with us we had five dolphins I, I I was a little bit worried about sharks there you know they had mm. one of those um what do you call them those shark things on the boat to try and deter them mm, um, yeah. that makes and I, it a little more real right <laughs> yeah yeah and I, I saw a flash of gray go underneath me and I, I was like oh my god what was that but thankfully it was five dolphins and um they they swam with us for quite a long time so close that I could actually touch them they were right in front of us uh, so wow, that was a cool. fan- fantastic experience. And unfortunately, my, f- my friend Helen, when we got to the beach, was a bit hypothermic because it was, a, oh, no. you know, it was cold for her. So they had to get it yeah. wrapped up quickly. And yeah. I think because of my winter swimming, I, I was fine. I was the only person not shivering on the boat when I got back. I was cold, but I, awesome. I didn't shiver at all. That's great. Um, so I uh, came back from Cape Town. Um, I think, I suspect I came down with covid when i got back within oh, about no. 36 hours oh my gosh um yeah i i, I had all the sort of symptoms that they described you know the uh temperature um dry tickly cough and then um you know the the awful breathing difficulties that went with it my husband was in scotland that week and i i did find it quite frightening because i have asthma um so it was quite scary and i did keep worrying if it was going to to get worse um so yeah that obviously put me out of action for a little while um and then we went into lockdown so swimming was out of the question Mm -hmm. (laughs) for a while I I was due to swim the Gibraltar Strait and Jersey to France um that year that was going to be my preparation for the channel I thought build up yeah slowly um the Gibraltar Strait was going to be with a group called Neder Almon in Spain who do have a, a slot of about two weeks in September and they group swimmers in groups of four of, of similar abilities and speed mm-hmm. to, to swim together. And <clears throat> the plan was for me to swim with two of the people who were in Cape Town that I knew and another lady from France. Obviously the travel didn't happen. We were due to travel to Barcelona for various training sessions, but couldn't. Right. Um, and then in sort of March, April, um, my husband was diagnosed with prostate cancer. This was just he, last year. Yes. <laughs> my yeah. goodness. Yeah. So he'd he'd had a PSA test um, before Christmas, which was actually an initiative being run by my work, and I'd signed him up because it's one of those things where he he wouldn't have ever done gone and booked him himself. He doesn't like right. doctors and you know needles and everything else. So um, <clears throat> and it had come back slightly abnormal. Mm-hmm. So he'd, he. Unfortunately, because it coincided with lockdown, it was a lot of waiting around for him to get appointments. They kept giving him phone consultations, which they can't really diagnose a lot over the phone, to be honest. Yeah. Um, 
<clears throat> so we had a few months then of him having um, biopsies, scans, uh, appointments as to what treatment he would have. And um, they had said that part of the tumour was of an aggressive type. So there was a risk it could break off and, mm, and go elsewhere. So then, you know, we decided, he decided that surgery was going to be the option to get it out, you know, altogether rather than uh, radiotherapy or anything. Um, so everything was a bit on hold, obviously, at that point, waiting for that to happen. He had um, surgery in mid-July. And I wanted to see how he recovered from that because it was, you know, radical surgery, having your prostate out. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so I, I, there was a Dover intensive training week that week, but it was right. His operation was right in the middle of it. So I, I couldn't commit to going and doing that. But I, after a couple of days, he said to me, look, I'm fine at home. I'd actually quite like a bit of peace and quiet. So why don't you go and join the last day of the camp? Mm. Um, which was Had the you Friday. been swimming up to this point? I'd I, I'd been very lucky that um, where we stable our horses, the owners of the yard happened to have a small outdoor pool and oh, heated wow. in their garden, and they knew that I liked to swim, so they were really kind and said to me, "Look, if you want to, you know, go in the pool." So I I swam on a tether for mm. um, a month or two, I think. Uh, until the lakes reopened and that did help just to keep me ticking over mm -hmm. yeah definitely um, and then started again at the lakes in June okay I think it was that when we came out of lockdown um, at, at this time obviously there were a lot of channel swimmers were pulling out of their swims one right. not being able to train yeah and two the the internationals were just not able to travel right and I just had in my mind I just thought gosh this could be an opportunity here if you know if pilots have got slots available maybe I should consider mm -hmm. bringing it forward because I'm actually not very good at waiting as well to do things I'm, I can be a bit impatient <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm an impatient these are good qualities for, yeah. for you <laughs> yeah um and I'd said this to my husband and, and he was like mm, yeah you, you've only been swimming on a tether and actually, you know, how long have you swum for so far this year? And I was like, yeah, okay. Um, but just, he said, let's just see how things go. So I went to Dover for this last day of the training and did the six hour qualifier. And I came, I said, right, I've done the qualifier. And he went, okay, okay, maybe you should, maybe consider it, but let's just see how it goes. Go and do your Jersey to France. And, you know, that will be a test because that's two, Jersey to France is two thirds of the channel distance. Mm hmm um so I thought okay yeah that will be you know a good test that's the longest thing I've ever done by a long stretch mm -hmm. um and the first sea swim you know alongside a boat a proper one other than the relay which is now at a time right right so I I um flew to Jersey in August for my Jersey to France I I traveled alone because my husband was still recovering from his mm. op and also we've got animals at home so he was looking after them um and then that week just didn't really go to plan there, it, it coincided with jersey um putting a stop on people traveling from france because infection rates were going up so mm -hmm. then there was a big question mark about whether i'd be allowed to la land on the beach in france mm -hmm. and they just couldn't seem to get permission for that so it was well we could go but you won't be able to swim up the beach and i was like well that's <laughs> yeah what I want to do I want to experience doing that yeah. um but thankfully one of the local swimmers who um has connections shall we say <laughs> um has the right knows the right people to contact managed to get the permission so at a very last minute on on the Saturday I got a call saying we can go um that evening and you can land on the beach I was like okay great um only the person who was going to crew for you, she's now gone to Dover to, to, to crew for someone else. I was like, oh, so who's going to crew for me? Oh, but don't worry, we'll sort someone out <laughs> and we need to get an observer. So it's all very last minute. Yeah. Um, so I I slept in the afternoon as much as I could, got my, my feeds ready, headed down to uh, the starting point about 10 o'clock at night, all kitted up, ready to go, very nervous, obviously. 
and then I met my uh, crew in the dark in the car park and uh, he said how are you with rough conditions I said I'm, I'm okay I'm okay with that okay how what about if there's thunder and lightning and I went oh no I, 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 have, my, I have a real phobia of lightning real phobia it's my big thing I don't like and so I was like I, no no I'm really not sure about that and at that point we saw the storm coming over and the pilot was just pulling into the harbour and he was like no I, this is a no-go oh yeah. man. Um, <laughs> then it was going to be a couple of days later then the weather didn't cooperate so I, I flew home not having swum not Jersey to swum. France so I was like now what do I do that was going to be my test you know whether mm. I could could consider the channel then that afternoon my um pilot from Robin Island uh Stuart Gleason rang me I, and I had been sharing my thoughts mm. with him about what I was considering and he said Mel you know sorry to hear I, you know I spoke to the, the Jersey pilot and just unfortunate and I said yeah I'm feeling really you know down now you know I've been training and I've got nothing to aim for now um so I, you know do I you know it was my, my test you know for the channel now what do I do and he said Mel we've we've all got you know spaces you know if you'd been here last week we we're at the beach going anybody wants to go you know virtually <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> um and I, I said okay um yeah I think I think I know what I need to do then and I still you know paused a little I listened to um I was not listened I read a blog by Cliff Golding who I think you've had on here mm -hmm. uh, about yeah. pro procrastination and I thought mm -hmm. and then I thought right that's told me I need to just get on with this yeah so I contacted my pilot and and said, is there any possibility I could bring forward my swim? And he said, yes, yep, you, we can go on the next neap tide. And I said, oh, great, okay. I went swimming that night, told some of my swim friends, I said, oh, he said I can go on the next neap tide. And they went, you know, that's next week. And I went, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, what have I just done? <laughs> um, so every day from then on, I woke up going, oh, my goodness, what have you done? <laughs> um it didn't happen that tide. Um, there was delays. Oh, no. <laughs> so I was delayed again, and I was like, oh, here we go again. I can see I'm not going to go anywhere this year. Um, and I th then, you know, I, I had, we were running up to guys. Um, swim was due to be later in September. Mm -hmm. So I was very conscious of that, you know, and the fact I was crewing for him. So I was like, gosh, I need to hurry up with this if it's going to happen because I'm not going to interfere with <laughs> crewing for, for, for Guy. Right. Um, and then an opportunity came to, to go on a spring tide. And I was like, OK, um, I don't know if I'm fast. In, you know, I always thought he had to be a faster swimmer for that. OK, for spring tide. Yeah, okay. it was just the impression I had. Um, I, but I, I, I spoke to Emma Franz, who um, knew me quite well, and I said, do you think I'd be okay? And a spring tide said, yeah, you'll be fine, Mel, go for it. Like, okay. <laughs> um, so having, with Jersey, told everybody I was doing Jersey and then had to keep saying, oh, it's not happened, no, it's been postponed. I decided I'm not telling everybody because I'm just jinxing it if I do. <laughs> and by not telling everybody that included my parents <laughs> um so they'd said oh disappointing about jersey and i just said oh yeah hey how these things happen and didn't just thought no don't say anything don't tell them because my, my mum didn't want me to swim the channel she told me a couple of times she didn't want me to do it mm. i had said to her i will be doing it but <laughs> i just thought <laughs> i didn't say when right <laughs> um so then it was a case of organizing crew um now helen who had swim robin island i know she I, I i knew she'd probably want to be involved and you know she doesn't work now so she would have the availability mm. um and then i didn't know what else to do i spoke again to stuart gleason and he said well why not try deborah you know deborah vine and i was like oh do you think she would and he said yeah yeah no and i thought wow that would be amazing because deborah is you know she's crewed for so many people she's an observer she's so experienced I was like my god that would be you know the ultimate to have Deborah on board so I messaged her and she said oh yeah god you know I'd love to if I can but she had other commitments as well I'm conscious I'm, I'm waffling on here a bit sorry I'll try and get to the, to the channel <laughs> swim in a minute <laughs> so I uh, fast forward to the to the the day we were meeting in uh, Dover ready for the swim we were um, meeting the pilot at 
midnight, um, 6th of September. So we had a bit, a few hours together earlier in the day. Um, I was spending a lot of time nervously talking, a lot of rubbish probably. And I was telling them about what happened to our friend from Croatia and, you know, following the marina and, oh, can you believe that happened and <laughs> everything. Um, we went, got to the marina in the evening. Um, the pilot wasn't best pleased with us because we'd brought too much stuff with us. Mm-hmm. Um, my friend Helen had brought two massive cool boxes. She'd bought freshly baked Cornish pastas. She had, <laughs> wow. she had more, more kit than I did. <laughs> and he was like, you're not getting all that on the boat here. <laughs> and uh, then the, the trolley was squeaking to the boat and he wasn't happy about that because there, naturally there were people trying to sleep on boats in the harbour mm-hmm. and this trolley squeaking along in the, in the night. Um, so we're uh, walking along along to the boat and I've, I've got my dry robe on, rucksack, hot water flask in one hand, phone and another bag in the other hand, just chatting. And one minute I'm walking along, the next minute, I'm underwater, literally submerged. And I was like, what's just happened? <laughs> I, had, I actually didn't know what happened. I didn't recall falling or anything. I, was, I just didn't understand how I'd gone from walking along the pontoon to being in the marina. <laughs> and then I thought, oh, my God, I've just told them about what happened to <laughs> the other person. Like, how could that happen? And I've just done it myself. You know? <laughs> so I was mortified to put it mildly um the pilot was not best pleased obviously he I, he did say jesus christ <laughs> i did hear him say um and i was saying you know oh, i'm okay and he's like yes but it's not okay and i couldn't get myself out because it's quite a, a climb back up you know there's no mm. way i could pull myself out and i was laden yeah. with all this stuff um so that's Deborah, soaked. <laughs> absolutely soaked yeah I'm very heavy so I'm just hanging on to the side while they're figuring out what to do and how to get me out and Deborah thankfully had the, the foresight to think I could get the nearest pilot but that's not somebody she knows I'll go and get Stuart because she knows Stuart she's gonna be a little bit less embarrassed which is true I was like oh thank god it's Stuart <laughs> you know and Stuart and Sean and Simon and it it took a few attempts but they did eventually manage to get me out but obviously there was a lot of don't pull her shoulders you know (laughs) obviously especially my left one (laughs) we had to be very careful but they did manage to get me out it wasn't very dignified I was uh, pulled out by one leg (laughs) did have a bruise (laughs) on my leg afterwards so as not to pull my shoulders (laughs) and uh we carried on to the boat me squelching all the way there making even more noise (laughs) um got to the boat the observer just took one look at me and and went oh my god you're gonna have to get out of those wet clothes quick because we've got a long boat journey and I was like yeah. I, that was all my clothes wow. and, you know the rucksack's just been submerged as well everything she's like ah oh, okay <clears throat> um my friend Helen offered me her um fleece lined onesie but she's less than half the size of me so I had <laughs> hope in hell of getting in it um but thankfully Deborah had her dry robe so I was able to put that on while we we uh went to the start line which I think was about 40 minute journey it was quite rough and it was cold so obviously they were saying are you okay are you okay sure you still want to go and I was like yep yep and actually I was feeling sick I'd had I'd taken seasickness stuff um and I was shivering but I was trying not to let on that I was shivering because it's from the you know they been on the boat and got in getting so damp before the swim um seems like determination kicked in pretty yeah, yeah I, was just, I just like you know this cannot cannot be happening you know I'm not gonna let this let, this is not gonna stop me you know I, I thought about what happened to James and I thought this is not gonna have the same ending I'm not gonna let that happen no way oh, impressive. um so we as we just pulled up to the start that there were a lot of other boats out that night and a lot of people I knew and other swimmers and my boat leader from the relay was out with her the next year's relay and I heard them shout go Mel in the dark they had just set off so that was really nice that was really nice just before I got in the water I got in and it felt like bath water it was really warm after being on the boat and getting wow. cold so I was like, oh, thank god for that at least I feel warm now um I, I swam to shore and I'm not the best on pebbles 
uh, at the best of times, I normally have my Crocs on to walk on pebbles. So I was trying to balance and then it got hit by a wave, thrown onto the beach, <laughs> landed on all fours. And I just thought, wow, this is going really well so far. <laughs> um, but it wasn't just me because I, I heard later that the Aspire Relay, their first swimmer, set off got in the water and got thrown back onto the beach by a wave oh my gosh so like after was, starting. <laughs> so yeah sorry. yeah so it was rough <laughs> yeah um so started to swim and actually I calmed down a lot then and I, I know everybody says that I think in that first couple of hours you just get settled into a rhythm it's like right just calm down you know just get on with it you know I thought the, you know the pilot's going to think this woman's an absolute idiot we're going to be out a couple of hours and we're going to be back you know, better, better start prepping the next swimmer. And I thought, well, I'm just going to have to prove you wrong. <laughs> I'm just going to have to turn this around, you know. Um, then I had my first feed at two hours um, and that didn't go to plan either. My, I couldn't open the bottle. Oh, no. So we had to abandon that. <laughs> so I was like, oh, this is, you know, this is t- was testing me a little bit, but I was like, nope carry on just calm down and keep going it was my own fault because I'd kept panic buying things when I was stressed kept buying mm. more bottles than I ever needed <laughs> something to do <laughs> and hadn't tested this in one I'd bought you know so it's my own my own fault so from there I went to hourly feeds all went I'd say pretty smoothly from there it yeah. was it was rough conditions but I, I didn't feel sick once I was in the water I was absolutely fine that's good um no issues I my shoulder wasn't giving me any issues, which was my big concern. Mm-hmm. Um, no jellyfish. So that Yay. was a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently there was one compass jellyfish, but I didn't see it. And it didn't, didn't, uh, I didn't encounter it. So that was good. The only thing they saw was a chair float past me but at <laughs> one point. I didn't see it, but <laughs> um, so it, it went pretty well up to then um, I, I was able to keep track of time until about the 12th hour because I was feeling hourly, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and I, before the day I'd only swum six hours, mm-hmm. it's the longest I'd ever swum. Yeah. So each hour after that, I was like, wow, that's a bonus, seven, eight, you know, 12. Oh, that's good. I've, I've never done that before. Um, wow. I didn't, I didn't look up for friends. I was determined not to look because they know they say don't. And then I thought, you know, it's going well. The, the pilot was coming out and gave me the thumbs up, big smile. He was happy with me. I was like, oh, wow, that's good. I've turned it around. This is, a, this is good. Hopefully it's all going well now. And then all of a sudden, at one point, Deborah sort of stopped me and said, look, Mel, look at me. Listen to what I'm going to say. You are going to have to pick up the pace. The tide has turned. You're going to have to fight now to get it to just you're going to pick, pick up. And, I, you know, she'd been re- great fun. You know, she's a great person and but you know she had a serious head on then I was like right I need to listen to this you know um so this went on for two or three quarter hours I think it was like this going a a lot sideways (laughs) Uh, my other crew Helen said that the apparently the tide had turned early which is what Mm. caused the problem and I checked with Stuart early and he said that can happen so um I did eventually look up as I thought we were getting closer and I was really confused by the view because it, it appeared to be white cliffs. Mm. And I was like, oh, that's not what I was expecting to see. You know, I know that at Cap Grenet you've got, you get the rocks and the lighthouse and then it's beach from then on if you go further. Why am I seeing white cliffs? Where am I? <laughs> uh, I'm really confused. Um, I had to, you know, really, really fight and it, it kept going on and on and on, this, you know, fighting to get in and, and I'd said I wanted uh, Battenberg is my favourite thing with marzipan as my last feed. Mm-hmm. And then actually when it came to it, I was like, oh, no, I can't eat that. I can't, couldn't face it, you know. <laughs> and I started to think I wasn't going to make it because I just thought I don't feel like I'm getting any closer to those cliffs. You know, I'm just going sideways and I feared I wasn't going to get out, but I, I, I just thought I'm going to get to the point where they're going to say, look, you're at Calais, you're going to have to get out. Mm, yeah. But um then all of a sudden, Deborah said, right, Mel, go. And I was like, what do you mean? Just go. You know, and Helen's getting in. And I was like, oh, oh, my God, I'm going to make it. <laughs> um, so Helen got in and, and swam with me, uh, caught me up and then just said, 
don't and had been told do not swim into that cave oh uh, what, what cave what, what do you mean cave? <laughs> I've never seen a cave before on, on a channel swim there's not a beach <laughs> so and lo and behold there were a few caves and it was I think it basically we were at Cap Blanc Ney mm. and it was high tide so there was there was no beach it was try and stand on a boulder under the water if you can touch the cliffs wow balance there and and you know when we know you've hit that point you avoid the cave we'll sound the klaxon and then come back wow so, yeah <laughs> I got I got there and, and my friend Helen and she's normally quite sweary I'm not generally but I even I was like where the are we what is this <laughs> you know where's the beach <laughs> I want to walk up on the beach. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be to be honest, I wasn't worried about that because, but I just thought, where am I? Where the hell am I? I've never seen this before. <laughs> um, but I was just happy. You know, I was delighted. I was absolutely ecstatic. I couldn't believe it. And then got back to the boat, and and Deborah, um, as I was getting ready, you know, I think jokingly said to me, "So what's next?" And I said triple crown immediately I was like triple crown I was already thinking that you know wow um, and then I was getting ready and I was like where where are my trousers <laughs> and she went ah yes well we we put all your stuff out to dry you know on the, on the journey over and we turned around at one point where, where they're gone they'd lost them overboard so <laughs> somewhere they don't know where <laughs> so there's a picture of me at the end where I'm sitting in my dry robe no I've got no pants on or anything so I've just got a towel over my legs going god you know doing anything else undignified now <laughs> so that's my story <laughs> <laughs> I, I should say that my 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 mum discovered I was swimming the channel when I was halfway across when she saw something on Facebook and uh, was quite alarmed and ringing my husband going where is she <laughs> And he said, oh, she's just training at Dover. She's not, I've just seen. She's swimming the <laughs> channel. <laughs> Has she forgiven you? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, she was naturally just worried, I think, you know. Yeah. Oh. And, yeah. How did you push through? So six hours was your longest swim, and, and mm. then here you are going into seven and eight. How did you just keep going? It, in truth, it wasn't as hard as I was expecting it to be I really expected it to be a lot harder mm. so I'd, I'd found some of the six hours in Dover Har Harbour harder and I think that's because of the boredom oh, you know right. you know yeah. you're just doing a training swim you're just going around in circles yeah and that's harder I think whereas I knew this had an end goal you know this was to achieve a lifetime ambition mm -hmm. I just felt very driven to do it I had <clears throat> so many reasons I wanted to do it you know someone said to me you'll have lots of reasons to want to get out you just need one reason to stay in That's for me good. actually it was the opposite I had a thousand and one reasons staying and no reasons to get out you know I was not getting out if yeah. and I'd had to be I would have had to be told to get out yeah. I think um yeah. I, I just wanted to make everybody proud you know and I, I just kept looking up at my crew and going and thinking my God, how lucky am I that these two people have just taken this time out to, to support me? You know, I don't want to let them down. That was a big thing. Um, yeah. I, I thought about, you know, I want to celebrate this. I want to be able to write on the, the wall in the pub. <laughs> I want to be able to celebrate with my friend Donna, who um, had swum the month earlier. Mm -hmm. And we would, you know, I thought I want to be able to do that. I just I don't want to fail at this I just I was just really wanted it really really wanted it mm -hmm. yeah what um what was your final time um 14 hours 44 wow yeah wow so it, it was like, go ahead it was quite a zigzag it was a bit of a zed across because <laughs> <laughs> the spring tide and the way it went on the day yeah but yeah yeah that's wonderful mm -hmm. um did you learn anything about yourself in that big, big, big swim that day? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. I, I learned that I do have resilience, which I really didn't think I did. Mm. You know, I, I've had at work in the past, you know, bosses said to me, you need to work on your resilience. But now you can be like, well, I swim. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've discovered that obviously that doesn't necessarily work in every situation, but I found mm. I did have it in that 
that situation. Mm-hmm. I, I listened to a lot of audio books before on uh, mental strength and I knew that they said it's 80% mental and I do think that that is a yeah I think that's probably true mm-hmm. you know it's how you perceive it on the day if you think you know this is a um I'm lucky you know I just thought I'm lucky I'm lucky to be one of the people here to do this I'm lucky that my shoulder didn't stop me mm-hmm. I'm you know I'm one of the few people who gets to do this I've got to be thankful I'm so lucky to be here is how I looked at it Rather than, oh, this is hard. I just thought, how lucky am I to be experiencing this? Yeah. 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 Look how resilient you are, though. You came back from this horse accident. You put through, <laughs> like, how could you not think you're resilient? <laughs> well, I, I, actually, and the other thing was I, I, I was thinking, I want to go back and tell the consultants, look what I did. Because yeah. they wouldn't have probably thought it was possible. I'm probably the only one who's had that operation. I had a lot of metal in it to hold it together, you know. Yeah. I don't think anyone else probably is has done that so I I haven't done it yet but I must go back to them and say look I you know thank you for what you did you know I've never taken it for granted and I actually it's made me in some ways it was a it was a positive it made me appreciate things I didn't probably appreciate enough before Mm -hmm. yeah yeah I feel like I have more questions I want to ask but we're coming up on time um what um who's inspired you oh gosh um lots of people um Jackie Cobell is is what do you know Jackie Mm-mm. okay Jackie um has done lots of amazing things she has the record for the longest channel swim I think it's something like 28 hours 44 and good to do that is just incredible to my to, to my mind how anybody swims for that long mm-hmm. she's gone on and done lots of other cold water swims she's um and lots of records and all sorts of swimming and she's just such an amazing person very positive she, she has a lot of campaigning for various issues as well and she's got a fantastic sense of humor so she's a massive inspiration and I did share with her my my thoughts on my swimming the channel and she said you know Mel go for it so I was delighted to be able to tell her I'd done it mm-hmm. um Sarah Thomas obviously mm-hmm. <laughs> I, Sarah Thomas four-way was a few days after my relay on the mm. same boat mm-hmm. so you know I, that was just incredible yeah, t- yeah what she's achieved so so many people so yeah. many people have inspired me yeah yeah I think you'll be quite an inspiration for others too <laughs> well, I, I think it I, I partly wanted to just tell the story just to say that you know even things like falling in the marina does not have to be the end of your swim you know, there's lot, right. you know, there are lots of things that happen that you could very easily think this is not meant to be. Yeah, <laughs> Get right. out. This is not meant to happen today. And I just, you know, I hope that it, it says to someone else, just use that. Use that to make you more determined, I think. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing your story, okay. Mel. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I hope I didn't waffle on too much. You did. It was wonderful. Um, I guess as we're just kind of wrapping up here, I was going to give people an opportunity if they want to ask any questions of Mel. But I also, before you, before you come off me to ask a question, I wanted to tell people I'm, um, I've just launched an accountability group that I'm going to start running with like monthly challenges and um, like a deep dive topic each month. So if anybody wants to join my accountability group, whoops, that wasn't what I meant to put in the chat. I was going to put in my link in case you want to join my account. Yeah, I saw group. that. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anybody have questions for Mel? <clears throat> Lynn, no questions, you but I really oh. want to thank you for sharing your experience. I, I am <laughs> signed up for a channel relay. And ah, excellent. I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit nervous about the idea because um, of the restrictions in the UK, I'm, uh, you know, for yes. COVID and I'm, yeah. Um, and crossing and coming over there I'm not I don't want to be quarantined and miss the relay but I also you know I I I, um, feel like I've done uh, fairly decent training I'm not not terrific but uh, you know I was in 25 minutes in 53 degree water um, the other day yeah Um, yeah and I felt and I felt good. I, I I didn't feel like I was, you know, struggling. It didn't feel um, difficult. Um, so I'm I'm really I was really interested in your experience about that. You know, yeah. The, um, 
Well, oh, well Guy, Guy came over obviously from the States last year when we had some of the restrictions. And I have a friend, Gina, who's coming from the US for a channel solo this year. I I think the, the restrictions are tighter on certain countries. I, I mean, it's all changing rapidly mm-hmm. at the moment, but I think it's it's some of the countries with higher infection rates that are quarantining, I believe. And I am fully vaccinated, so mm. there's that. Yeah. Um, so that's really lovely. I, I really thank you for that. Your um, sharing. I, I mean, this is perfect <laughs> for me to just now, as I'm training for my relay. So thank you. Oh no, I should look up for you at Dover as well. Thanks. When you arrive, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Well, I'm hoping it all works out. So yeah. That's all. Well, thank you and um, good to see everybody. Have a great, have a great day. I, I just wanted to say something very quickly. Um, I was obviously incredibly lucky um, to meet Mel in our Croatia camp, uh, which turned into her and another one of the campers becoming my substitute crew. And not only is Mel incredibly inspirational as a swimmer, that she is just the best crew you could ever want because, um, well, and I also had the best observer you could ever want, yeah. which was Deborah, <laughs> um, because the environment that they created of professionalism, support, you know, competence, it, it just, it, it made so much difference to, wow. um, you know, sort of, you, you're not there with, with strangers, you're with, with this, this great team. And, um, I, one thing I would take away from that is that if you can, um, you know, get a crew as great as Melanie, then, you know, or Deborah, you know, it, it's a, it's, it can be really important to, but, you know, both your success and your experience. And I was incredibly grateful and incredibly lucky. Um, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing Mel over here for her triple crown trips because That's right. yeah, you know, got we're going to see her and do Manhattan and, you know, crush Catalina, Catalina and all that kind of stuff. So that's going to be great. Yeah, I can't wait. Thank you, Guy. It was an absolute honor to, to crew for you. It really was. Uh, 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 thank you. It was, it, it was <laughs> great. Here, come up and do them in from Agog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We get to the Northern Vermont now. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, you guys. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Have a great Thank afternoon you. over there. <laughs> we'll Thank talk you, Shannon, and everybody. And bye, 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 Gia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Melanie. Mel. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you. <laughs> Thank bye, you. Deborah. I hope you enjoyed today's interview. Do you want to take Marathon Swim Stories with you? Subscribe on your favorite podcast provider. Want to connect with like-minded limit pushers? Join us for Marathon Swim Stories Live on Tuesdays at 5.30 a.m. Pacific, 8.30 Eastern, 13.30 GMT. Thanks for watching.